On November 28, 2012 at 11 o'clock, Habila is shot in front of his wife and six-year-old child. It's because he refuses to deny Christ. The gunmen come into my house, threw into my house, four of them with AK-47, then ordered me to come out with my family, and then ordered my family to go back so that I will sit in their front. The uh, leader asked me, why are we preaching Islam? You refuse to accept Islam as a religion. I told them that I am a Christian. One of them now asked me, are you ready? To die as a Christian, I told them, yes, I am ready to die as a Christian. Now they shoot me through my nose. When they shoot me from here, I fell down the ground with my head. E blood everywhere. He followed me and marched my leg. No response. Now he observed me, no response. I'm on the ground. Blood, blood, blood. I did not see anything. Only a duck. So I, on my thinking, I am waiting to see the new kingdom, the new heaven that God promised to his people. Although Habila could save his life by converting to Islam, this isn't a serious option for him. The Bible say that we are a new creator, a creature in Christ Jesus. If I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus, there's everything that I was supposed to do, I will do it like Christ did. If we go through the Bible, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Jesus says that, uh, Paul says that, we are already dying, but now is Christ is living. A Christian or a believer will know that he is not the one living, because during the baptism now, you are baptized, thus you die with sin and rise with Jesus. Hmm. That's what my thinking that I will not be a Muslim because I die with Christ. No, no, I rise with Christ. For nine hours, Habila lies on the ground, bleeding without any kind of help. The police promises to come, but doesn't. The next day, the local hospital in Podeskum, the city where Habila lives, is not able to give sufficient aid. By car, Habila is moved to another hospital, four more hours away. In this hospital too, the doctors are not capable to help Habila. The wound to his head is too complicated. Again, Habila is transported to another hospital. This is the actual what has happened. This is where the bullet has entered. He broke all these places, and you see, he, this is the exit place where the bullet has gone out. All these wounds are not there. They broke all the wounds that I hear. My mouth is broken. They are using a tube in order for me to feed and to have water. Once more, Habila is confronted with many misfortunes. For several reasons, the doctors are not able to operate on Habila sooner than six weeks after the attack. At last, on the day of operation, a great miracle happens. During the operation, the, operation, the doctor advised to take a wound from here, from my leg. From my leg, the cut off the bone from here and some flesh from here to cover this place, to cover the place. But that day there is a miracle that happened. Then find fresh bone here. After all the scanning, he did not see that bone. Also the planned transplantation of skin is no longer necessary. The wound in Habila's face has almost vanished. Four months after the attack, Habila is feeling better. He doesn't feel any hatred against the extremists who shot him. The Bible says that we must, it's a must, as a Christian, you must forgive. 
I am teaching my child that let him remember, I will say that, uh, let him forgive. Because God has forgiven us. We are a condemned criminals that we deserve nothing but to die. What Christ died for our sin. Now he forgive all our sins. He loves us. That's why we must show that love to the people that hurt us. Since that day, I pray to God, God, forgive them. God, forgive them. My intention and my prayer is that let them know the truth and let them be safe, not to be condemned. I love them. You love them, really? I love them. I love them. If I have the opportunity to see them, to see them I will hug them and I will pray for them. Well, many people who watch to your story will say, how can you do that? God, because Christ is love. God that I am serving is love. When he is living this world, he see you. The command is love each other. That's the command. We can love each other. Habila is sure of the fact that God saved his life for a special reason. It's Habila's mission to convince the whole world of God's love and faithfulness. My friends, God is with you. He will not leave you. You can open up. Open up to him, accept him in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Brethren, the message of today is that Jesus loves you. In November 2012, Nigerian Christian Habila Adamu answered his door to find a group of Boko Haram militants. They shot him in the head with an AK-47, but he survived. This week he testified before the U.S. Congress, and he joins us now from our D.C. Bureau. Why did Boko Haram try to kill you that night? Yeah, because I am a Christian. You know, in Yobi, we are few Christians in Yobi. Uh, the Boko Haram is following house by house, village to village, town to town, killing Christians. Mm. Yeah, they came to me because I am a Christian. Also, they want me to deny my faith in mm -hmm. order to be safe. Well, why are they targeting Christians? Yeah, because they want to Islam Islamatize Nigeria. Mm. That's why they are targeting Christians. If you have agreed to deny your faith, you will be safe. Mm. If you not agree to do, to do it, they will kill you. And shout Allah Akbar that Allah is great. Wow, unbelievable. You chose to stand your ground. Why did you stand your ground and refuse to denounce Christ? What can separate us from the love of Christ? Is it hardship? Is it persecution? Is it sword? No, nothing can separate us from that love of Christ. All those words make me to stand, mm -hmm. to remember that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. Indeed. You see, Christ did something for me and other people in the world. We are sinners. We are condemned criminals that we are supposed to die. But he took all this burden. He paid for our death. He died for us. Amen. Why can I not submit to Jesus? Beautiful. That's why I did.